This is Houston. Say again, please. Uh, Houston, we've had a problem. Return to Earth. The scorching, perilous moments faced by spacemen. Whether Russian or American, the men of space have to meet this final challenge. The Navy primes a 20-inch satellite for flight, hoping it'll join Uncle Sam's three baby moons now circling the Earth. Riding in the nose of the third stage of the Vanguard rocket, the newest satellite depends upon myriad electrical components to get it into orbit. Searchlights pierce the night at Cape Canaveral, as from the launching pad, Vanguard, a three-stage rocket, pursues its mission of the International Geophysical Year, a giant torch reaching for distance. But orbit is not attained. The first two stages successful. The rocket's third stage does not fire and falls into the sea. Telemetered records inform the Navy that failure of a small component or a wire tripped the Vanguard. With a tiny monkey named Goliath in its nose cone, the mighty Atlas missile is launched at Cape Canaveral, Florida. The hope is to learn how Goliath fares during a space flight. But suddenly Atlas begins to waver off course, and 30 seconds after takeoff, the range safety officer is forced to destroy it. was to take the payload 650 miles into space. Others will follow until space flight is made safe for man. At Cape Kennedy, they were nearing the end of long months of preparation for the most startlingly ambitious item of the U.S. space program to date, the rendezvous of a manned capsule and a target missile, Agena. Heroes of the attempt were to be Captain Walter Schirrer and Major Thomas Stafford. But it was this spacecraft, the Agena target vehicle, which gave the United States its biggest space disappointment. Germany was to have rendezvoused and joined up with Agena. A few thought anything would go wrong early on. The Atlas launching rocket was well tried, and around its pad, preparations for the countdown went smoothly. seen perfect. Yet before the exhaust cloud dispersed and only six minutes after blast off, a Gina exploded. The mock-up of the moon surface and the moon bug is a reminder that the present eight million pound misfortune only delays the rendezvous program. Space almost claims its first victims as America's Gemini 8, manned by astronauts Scott and Armstrong, attempted a link-up with an Agena rocket. All went well as the spacecraft jockeyed into position for the difficult manoeuvre. Gemini had chased the Agena for over 100,000 miles and now was within inches of success. Suddenly the linked craft began to spin wildly. The Agena was blasted clear and Neil Armstrong and David Scott began their fight for life. Only their supreme ability, backed up by expert ground guidance, enabled the spacemen to stop the sickening spin, regain control and make a perfect splashdown in the Pacific. Back on Earth again, two men who had conquered the worst ordeal yet experienced in space. Colonel Vladimir Komarov, the man history books will record as the first cosmonaut killed during a space flight. The Apollo capsule, as it moved slowly towards its final stage, that of mating with the Saturn rocket, February the 21st. For that was to be the beginning of the 14-day flight for a three-man spaceship, a prelude to man's landing on the moon. So far, space had cost no American lives. Lieutenant Colonel Grissom, Gus to all America, was to be the skipper of the capsule. He was 40, with two children, Ed White, he was the first American to walk in space. He also had two children. Roger Chaffee had never flown in space. In the control center, on closed circuit TV and by instruments, complete contact with the capsule was maintained. With such brilliant achievements already to the credit of astronauts, an accident before blast off was unthinkable. Grissom, White and Chaffee died. 
three courageous men have shown that there is no easy road from Earth 